good day all and welcome in this session we are going to discuss about oogenesis in the animated background right first of all what is oogenesis i hope most of us know the answer the process of formation of a mature oocyte from the oogonia is what is called as oogenesis and unlike spermatogenesis oogenesis begins very much before birth we have already seen by sixth week the primordial germ cells invade the indifferent gonads and induce the gonads to develop into ovary in the genetically female embryo from 7th week the gonads begin the female morphological differentiation on the screen you can see a transverse section of a female embryo by 7th week of intrauterine life in the developing ovary you can very well appreciate the degenerating primitive sex cords in the medulla that is the medullary cords this will form the future ovarian medulla also this degenerating medullary cords will establish the difference between the male and female embryonic gonads by 7th week of intrauterine life in the gonads of the male the medullary cords are retained also in the picture close to the cortex you can see newly forming cortical cards by proliferation of surface epithelium along with the primordial germ cells and this will establish the future ovarian cortex right in the meantime the primordial germ cells will be differentiated into oogonia and the oogonial cells increase in number by mitotic division by the end of the third month the oogonia arranged into clusters and each cluster is covered by a layer of flat cells derived from the surface epithelium these flat cells covering the oogonial clusters are called as follicular cells in this place we can observe some difference in the growing pattern of the oogonia that is majority of the oogonia will continuously divide by mitotic division and increase in number but some oogonia enters into meiosis and will get arrested at the diploting stage in prophase 1 now meiosis 1 and form the primary oocyte on the screen what you are seeing is a section of a immature ovary at the end of third month of intrauterine life of a female embryo here you can very well appreciate the developing ovarian cortex with clusters of oogonia surrounded by flat follicular cells also you can see some primary oocytes in the cortical region the next few months the oogonia rapidly increase in number and by fifth month the number reaches to a maximum of around 7 million at the same time the first cycle of cell death begins and so by 7th month most of the oogonia degenerates and become atrophic except a few along the surface of the ovary now the surviving oogonia one by one will enters into meiosis and will get arrested at the diploting stage of prophase 1 of meiosis 1 along with the already existing surviving primary oocytes now 
these primary oocytes are individually surrounded by a layer of flat follicular cells and the whole structure is called as primordial follicle on screen you can see the structure of the ovary of a 7 months old female embryo the cortex is mostly filled with primordial follicles with the primary oocyte in the center and a surrounding layer of flat follicular cells you can also appreciate a few oogonia over the surface right at the time of birth nearly all the oogonia will be converted into primary oocytes and all the primary oocytes will be in the resting stage or the diploting stage of prophase 1 of meiosis 1 this stage of dormancy is achieved by the oocyte maturation inhibitor a small peptide secreted by the follicular cells at birth only 6 lakhs to 8 lakhs of primary oocytes will be present in the ovary just a recollection by 7th month of intrauterine life the ovary had around 7 million of oogonia right and during childhood the second cycle of cell death begins and that leads to the degeneration of most of the oocytes so nearly to the time of puberty approximately 40000 primary oocytes only present in the ovary and less than 500 will be ovulated in the lifetime of a female also they all have to rest and wait in the diploting stage of prophase 1 of meiosis 1 to be converted into a secondary oocyte and to be ovulated out so the last ovum that to be ovulated has to wait for 40 to 50 years or even 55 years for maturation and ovulation it is because of this reason it is risky for a mother to have a baby after 35 years of age because though the diploting stage is the safest stage for rest there are possibilities for the oocyte to develop some genetic disorders in the course of time that affects the baby too consider down syndrome at the time of puberty a pool of growing follicles established out of that only 15 to 20 primordial follicles begin to mature and only one will attain full maturity and will be ovulated out others die on the course summary by third month the primordial germ cells differentiated into oogonia by the end of third month the oogonia arranged into clusters and each cluster is covered by flat follicular cells by fourth month the oogonia increase in number by mitotic division by fifth month the oogonia reaches to the maximum of 7 million that will be followed by the first cycle of cell death by 7th month most of the oogonia degenerates except a few along the cortex and the surviving oogonia enters into meiosis 1 and get arrested in the diploting stage of prophase 1 of meiosis 1 and called as the primary oocyte now the primary oocytes are individually surrounded by a layer of flat follicular cells and the whole structure is called as primordial follicle 
at birth all the oogonia will be converted into primary oocyte and the ovary contains around 6 lakhs to 8 lakhs of primordial follicle at childhood the second cycle of cell death begins around puberty only 40000 primary oocytes present in the ovary in that less than 500 will be ovulated in the lifetime of a female